Hi and welcome to the show. Today it is an ultimate guide. It's on publishing, the ultimate guide to publishing a life story. The show comes to you today thanks to the Your Family Story system which helps you record a loved one's life story. And I have some free sections for that coming up and I'll have all the information at the end of the show. So stay with me. If you are brand new, Forever Young Autobiographies is the place where we learn to write life stories for family and friends so that unique memories can live on. And I would be I would love it if you could follow, subscribe and like the show. So this week we have the Olympics on and we have been enjoying it so much in our household because in Australia here it's actually in our time zone. And for the first time my kids are really understanding what it is and they've been getting into it as well which is fantastic. It's the first time for them. But for the athletes it's actually been five years for them to train for this event, for all their events. Such a long time and it can feel like such a long time when we are uh, working on our life story projects too. We're, we're planning to write, we're writing, we're polishing and it could be an autobiography, it could be a memoir, a biography or some other life story project. But it feels like we're taking for ages but I'm here to tell you that when you reach the publishing stage you are in the home straight. That's it, you're just like an Olympian, you're on the home straight and I've got this guide for you today to help you clinch victory with that last step. Before we move on, it's worth noting that I've done a few of these ultimate guides. So this is the fourth one, the last one, and I'll have links to all of those in the show notes. So please look out for those, lots of helpful information. But in this ultimate guide, the publishing guide, it starts off by bit of a refresher about the different formats that you can publish a life story. I have mentioned these in other guides but I do give you a little bit of a reminder that you can do as much or as little as you want to publish a life story. You might simply want to transcribe an interview. Terrific! You might just want to share an audio recording of an interview or of yourself talking through stories. That's fine too. Maybe even start out with a short feature story of, of a full life. Maybe you want to do a scrapbook or a photo book, even post something on a website. There's so many different ideas, so I give a bit of a refresher there. But by far and away, the most popular format that most people choose is books, publishing a hard printed cover book about a life story. So this is what the guide mostly focuses on. And when you get to books and book formats, there's a lot to learn when you're new to this. Um, for example, you might have you be thinking about or being asked about trim sizes. You want to know what's the margin set up? What font do I uh, use? Even what's, what's back matter? What do I put there? What's a running head? What's chapter style? And should I use a book template? So all of these questions, they are in the first section of this guide and I answer them for you in plain English so that you can keep moving on to the next step. And that next step is to do with designing. So we've got, we drill down a bit more into the designing of the book because there's things here that can trip people up. Most notably, I run through exactly how to set up your photos in the book. So photos are a real draw card for readers. They flick to these first and we want to make sure that they're good quality. They're high resolution photos. So I will, in this guide, I go through how do you find out what a what size the photos are at, how do you resize them, how do you uh, change that. So I go through all of that so you make sure you have quality photos. Then we also look at covers. So we've got front cover and back cover and I'll go over exactly how do you pick a photo, what text do you use, how do you lay it all out and maybe you need some help where to get that. So that's all covered in that second section. And also just before printing, it's worthwhile looking at a dedication. We want to make sure we have a heartfelt dedication and I cover that as well. I walk you through the different types of dedications, I tell you how you can write one and I give you some examples. So that's all in the design phase of this ultimate guide. Then we move on to phase three which is all to do with printing. And again, those questions are going to be hitting you fast and furious. You're going to be 
asked about different trim sizes, you're going to be asked about what colour paper do you want? What weight of paper do you want? What type of paper do you want? And do you want hardcover book or do you want a paperback cover book? So again, I detail all of this for you so it's really clear and easy to pick your choices and move on. And then another question will pop up. Okay, we finalised this book, we're getting it onto the press. How many, how many copies do we actually need? And this can be a bit of a source of stress because there's quite a few people to consider when you're getting your book printed. For example, you've got proofreaders, you've got friends and family, and that can be a never ending list of people. So how do you control that? And are there other people in the community that you might not have thought of that could really use or have value out of a book that you produce. So stressing less with getting your print copies right is really important. And then we're going to get to that inevitable bit where we printed our book and we come across an error. Yes, and we're going to learn how to smile and we're going to get through these print errors because it is going to happen. We are only human. And I talk you through some ideas on managing that. First of all, concentrating on what went well in the print. Always focus on the positive, not that minute bit that might not have gone to plan. And remember that in the moment it seems like a big deal, but as time passes, it might only just be a small thing and it will enable you to see the forest for the trees. Also, remember that your audience, what they're there for, they're not there to pick out the typos. So get that clear in your mind. And also remember that down the line, you might have a collection of things that you can, you can put together and fix for another print run. So smiling and getting through any of those print errors is a really big deal. So that's section three of the ultimate guide. Moving into the last section, and these are final things that we do when we've finished a print run or got our book onto the press. Number one is considering making it an ebook. So this is going to increase the shareability of your book. Things to consider here could be adding hyperlinks, URLs, things that can add value to your work. Then we want to make sure that the cover image is actually the first page and how you do that. And then we're going to think about saving the book into a shareable format, which is often a PDF. And I'll walk you through that process. In the last section of this guide, the fun bit is also happening. And that is we're celebrating and launching our life story project. Now this is so exciting but we do need to organize a few things. There's actually quite a few things you need to consider like uh, what sort of type of launch are you going to do? When are you going to hold it? Where are you going to hold it? Who's going to come? Are you going to send out invites? Are you going to come up with a theme? Perhaps you're going to need extra copies for this launch. You have your book, extra copies of your book handy. And then there's other things you might not have thought of, like, is anyone going to do a toast? Uh, am I going to give a reading? Or am I maybe going to do a speech? There's lots of things there that you can think about to celebrate the coming to the end of this whole life story project. Really, really exciting. So to recap, the ultimate guide is full of lots of information to help you get your book published. So we talked about number one, considering format. Mostly I focus here on book layout. Then we talk about designing that book, all the things you need to consider. Thirdly, we do all the topics to do with printing your book. And finally, fourth, how to share that in another format and then celebrate what we have co completed. Now, my hope is that you will get through this publishing phase so that you can share and celebrate a life story. If you want to know more about the guide and get the links, please check out the show notes or go to foreveryoungautobiographies.com slash publishing. You'll find all the links there to more information on each of these topics. So really invaluable key source of information is this ultimate guide to publishing. So please have a look and leave me a comment. You can leave me a comment here. You can leave me a comment over at the article. Where are you in your life story project? Are you reaching the publishing phase? Is there something that you're stuck with? Please let me know. I'd love to be able to help. And if you have any questions to do with life story writing, you can always send me an email. Go to foreveryoungautobiographies.com 
slash contact. At the top of the show, I mentioned the Your Family Stories system, which helps you record a loved one's life story. So you interview them, what do you do with all that information, how do you compile it, and how do you get it out there in the wider world. And I have some free sections for that, just so you can get a bit of an introduction. You can get that by going to foreveryoungautobiographies.com slash free. Put in your name, your email, hit OK, and I will send you the link straight away. Now, I will be back again next week with another topic, and I'd love for you to join me. So please follow, subscribe, and like the show. And until then, happy writing.